Hi, Wicked Dave here. You often see questions online regarding suspension equipment. Is this good enough? Is that good enough? And an example of the equipment. My overriding principle is to use the best equipment I can. I 100% use equipment safety rated for human use wherever possible. Where it isn't, I use stuff that's totally over the top. For instance, my suspension ring is massively stronger than it actually needs to be. Largely for me, I end up using climbing equipment, which I can be absolutely sure is up to the job. I want to be completely confident in the equipment that I use. I don't want there to be any nagging doubt in my mind about its security or strength. This means I can forget about my rigging equipment and concentrate 100% on the person I'm tying. That's how confident I want to be in my equipment. So confident I can forget about it completely. So, what to use? Rated climbing gear is my number one go-to. You can even colour coordinate with this stuff. Climbing slings are a great thing to have that you can use wherever there's a bar or a beam to hang from. They come in all kinds of lengths and colours. They are rated and reliable. A 10mm Dyneema sling will typically be rated around 22 kilonewtons, which would translate into a static load of around 2,200 kilograms, or around 5,000 pounds. The average carabiner, and I'm going to use the ones I use personally as an example, have a closed strength of around 24 kilonewtons. That's 2,400 kilograms, or 5,400 pounds. If you use a swivel, use a rated one. They usually come in between 22 and 36 kilonewtons. Mine is a 23 kilonewton one. And plugging the math in again, that's 2,300 kilograms, or about 5,150 pounds. As you can see, if we take 70 kilograms or 150 pounds as a reasonable weight for a model in suspension, then we have a huge, huge factor of safety. I know people talk about dynamic loads in bondage a lot, but whichever way you slice it, with figures like these, you've got a lot of margin with equipment like this, which is exactly what I want. I should probably go over a few things I wouldn't recommend. The number one thing I don't recommend is cheapskating your gear. The price difference between good gear and bad is not big enough to ever justify taking a chance with your partner's safety. Plus, if you're concerned about saving a couple of bucks, that you're happy to risk somebody's life for it, then you should really question your priorities and whether you really ought to be tying people up, because safety of the person you're tying has to be your number one concern. So first, carabiners. There are a lot of things that look like carabiners that are not. They are um, used for decorative purposes, they are gimmicks, and some of them are designed for use with non-human loads where they don't have to have such a high margin for error. No matter how confident you are in them, you can't have the same peace of mind that you can from a piece of gear that's actually designed with tolerances to do this job properly. While I know that carabiners weren't specifically designed for rope bondage, they are designed with a great big margin of safety for hanging human beings. The same applies to carabiners with swivels built into them. I'm showing here extreme examples for illustration, showing a couple of really bad ones into a couple of really good ones at opposite ends of the scale. As with everything, go with quality. Suspension rings are a pretty big subject. Some are made for use with bondage, these can be good or bad, and are generally welded steel, sometimes with dividers within them. Sometimes these are practical, and sometimes for decoration. Most of these rings, while not rated, are still good and strong, and you're going to be hard-pressed to find an actual rated bondage suspension ring. You should remember that the thinner the ring, the harsher it is on your rope, in much the same way as a carabiner is. Rings with a thicker section are kinder to your rope. In recent years, it's become popular to use gymnastic rings for suspension. Most of these are pretty strong, but you can get them in different qualities, and you should, as always, go for good, solid, quality equipment that you can rely on. You can get gymnastic rings in wood, plastic, composite, and metal. 
If you've ever seen these things used by gymnasts, you will know that they can take a hell of a hammering. I have not heard of anyone having problems with this kind of ring. Some people have done some very impressive destruct testing on them too. Coming to things outside of the items I've already mentioned, there are of course plenty of things that, though not rated, are likely to be strong enough for suspension use. It's not possible to give general advice on these items, so I'm just going to iterate what can be stated as a general principle. Where possible, use the best quality rated hardware, so that you can concentrate your attention where it should be. And that is on the person that you're tying. Thanks for watching. Cheers.